Hey, Flip Geometry, how are you doing? Last one here in Chapter 6, and we are looking today at coordinate geometry uh, with quadrilaterals. So just like we've done with triangles, uh, where we can put triangles on a Cartesian plane and do some work with them, we're going to do the same thing with quadrilaterals today. Not a whole lot of new concepts, just some practice of things you already know how to do, but apply to four-sided shapes instead of three-sided ones. So let's jump right into it. You will have many questions in this assignment that plot four points on a Cartesian plane and say what kind of quadrilateral is this. Um, there's lots of things that you can do to test the question. Um, if you can determine that it's a parallelogram, then you can ask the question, well, is it now a rectangle? Is it a rhombus? Is it a square? One of the properties of a, of a parallelogram is that the diagonals bisect each other. So if the midpoint of one diagonal is the same as the midpoint of another diagonal, then the midpoints of the two diagonals is the same, which means that the two diagonals bisect each other. So you can use the midpoint theorem, and it doesn't walk you through this in the slide, but you know how to find the midpoint of a line. Find, use the midpoint theorem, and you find the midpoint of AC, and you find that it is 3 halves, 1 half, and you find the midpoint of DB, and you find that it is 3 halves, 1 half, and you say, hey, there it is. The midpoint of these two lines is the same. They bisect each other. Therefore, this is at least a parallelogram. It could be more, though. It could be a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. So let's go and look at something a little bit more carefully. Um, we're going to, if you could find the slope of AC, um, you would find that it is negative 1. And if you find the slope of DB, this, out, this uh, diagonal here, you will find that it is 1. What shape has diagonals that are perpendicular to each other? A rhombus. And so not only is this a parallelogram, but the slope of the diagonals tell us that it is, in fact, a rhombus. Um, and so that is the most detail we can get. We can just look at this diagram and see that these are not 90 degree angles, right? And so it's, we don't have to go on and see if it's a square. Um, but it's a parallelogram, and then looking at the diagonals again, we discover that it is, in fact, also a rhombus. This is kind of an interesting question. It takes the same idea and goes backwards through it. So in the last question, we had a parallelogram. We had to find the, the point where the diagonals bisect each other um, and determine that it's a parallelogram and then get the slope and things of that nature. We're going to do that same kind of stuff. We're going to go backwards. Here I have a quadrilateral. Um, and this quadrilateral is ostensibly a parallelogram. Um, and I've been given the points of two of the vertices of this, this parallelogram. And I've been given the point where the diagonals intersect. And so I want to know the, uh, what, is, what are the coordinates of the other two points of this parallelogram. The question is kind of flawed because it never says that it is a parallelogram. But we have to assume that it is to be able to answer this question. So assuming that it's a parallelogram. Um, and that the diagonals meet at 3, 2. I'm just going to use the midpoint formula, and I'm going to go backwards through it, and I'm going to find out what the missing coordinate is. So um, the midpoint of FH is T, 3, 2, and so here's the midpoint formula with what I know. Um, one of the coordinates of the ends is 4, 1 here, okay? And so I plug in 4, 1, and that's the other x and y that I don't know. Here's the midpoint formula. I'm going to solve for um, x, and then I'm going to solve for y. Not hard. It's just kind of an interesting thing to do. So the new coordinate, the other side of that segment, would be at uh, 2, 3. And so f is located at 2, 3. I can do the same thing for g. Um, and I can plug in what I know, solve for x, and then solve for y. And the uh, coordinate of g is 6, 4. So it's the same thing. It's just using the midpoint formula backwards. Okay. Uh, let's do another example here. State the missing coordinates for each figure. Um, here I know none of these coordinates except for l. And all I know is that it's at w, 0. Well, I can tell you just by the way this diagram is drawn that this is going to be on the y coordinate. So the so the x value here is zero, the x value here is zero, and the y value here is zero because it's on the on the axes for those. Um, this is w. I don't know necessarily what this is off the top of my head, and I don't have any idea what this is or what this is. So I need some help. This is a rhombus, I'm told, 
And I'm told that the diagonal lengths are 2w and 2t. Okay, let's think about this for a minute. The diagonal lengths are 2w. So this is at w, and this line is 2w long. What does that mean that this is? Negative w, right? If this is 2w long, and this is at w, then this goes back 1w to 0, and then back another w to negative w. So this is at negative w0. And then this one, the diagonals are 2t. So that means, again, this dimension is t and this dimension is t. So this would be 0t and this would be 0 negative t. Kind of an interesting question. This one's really fun too. I have a trapezoid and one of the vertices is plotted at the origin of the system. And the other three are just given some variables and I'm supposed to determine everything that I can about um, the, the information to determine what's the coordinate of this point. Well, P, H, this, that's the point here. Um, this is an isosceles trapezoid, which means that this side length is going to be the same as this side length, which means that the distance from here to here on the x-axis underneath this, this is P, should be the same here as this distance here. Well, but I don't know how far across this is. This is R. This is P. This will also be the length of P, which means that the x-axis up here should be whatever R is minus whatever P is. R minus P is going to be what I put here. Okay, And then if the height in the y-axis here is H, that's going to be the same thing over here. So this coordinate Q is going to be R minus P H. And here you can see that uh, written out for you. So the distance here was P that brought you up to this. This, because it's an isosceles trapezoid, will be the same dimension. This is point R. So R minus P brings me to this point, And then H up brings me to R minus P H. Kind of a good time. All right. A couple of definitions here for you. Um, we had, we had uh, lines and triangles that were drawn from the medians of the sides and we we called them mid segments and the mid segment um, was parallel to the side that was opposite it and half as long um, unless we were talking about trapezoids we, we had a little bit of a different word for it um, here we're gonna we're gonna say that in any quadrilateral if you connect opposite medians you get what's called a bimedian okay a quadrilateral bimedian is a segment connecting midpoints of opposite sides of a quadrilateral. Cool thing about bimedians is that um, they bisect each other in any quadrilateral. Kind of cool. So it doesn't matter what the quadrilateral is. If you find the bimedians, they bisect each other. It's kind of a neat property, and we'll be able to use that in a little bit here. Here's our last problem type that I want to give you a picture of before we move into the assignment. Um, we, we can use coordinate geometry to prove that the bimedians of a convex quadrilateral, and then they give you the definition there again, the segments connecting the midpoints of the opposite sides bisect each other. So here is a, uh, a scalene quadrilateral. None of the sides are the same length. And um, I have the bimedian here, and I have the bimedian here. And they are bisecting each other. That's what we're trying to prove. It's kind of an interesting thing. You could do this a couple of different ways. You could just um, do all of the hard math and figure out what is the coordinate of this point and this point, what is the midpoint of a line here, and what does that mean that this distance is and this distance is. And you could do a whole lot of coordinate math. Or um, you could just draw some auxiliary lines to turn this center into four triangles. And then you could prove that these triangles are, are, uh, are uh, congruent to each other. So here we have uh, these two sides and these two sides. We can use vertical angles there. Um, we can use points here to determine the length of these hypotenuses. And then it'd be pretty simple to prove that these triangles are all congruent. And then um, we have corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And we can, we can say that these are all the same length. So, couple of ways to do that. Let me know what questions you have in the comments field below, and I'll get to as quickly as I can, or um, you can talk to me in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.